Hello. Today is Good Friday, and normally here at Orsley Park Evangelical Church, we would be having a hot cross bun cafe, enjoying tea, coffee, hot cross buns, and Easter activities for the children. However, something called coronavirus means that we have had to cancel that this year, as we are all in lockdown. As we are aware, this is a very aggressive virus affecting the whole world and is totally unprecedented, something we have not seen the like of before. And I would like to start by saying a big thank you to all those NHS workers, emergency service personnel, essential service workers, workers who are preparing new hospitals to cope with the sick, and the frontline community and nursing home care workers who are so often overlooked. Thank you. That doesn't mean to say that Easter has been cancelled today at APEC. We are holding a virtual hot cross bun cafe online at 11 o'clock when we hope we can all be linked remotely together just to have fellowship and enjoy a cup of tea, coffee and of course a hot cross bun. To help us remember the significance of Good Friday and why it is so important to us in the Christian calendar, I want to do a reading from Luke chapter 23. We pick up the reading where Jesus is being taken from Jerusalem to Calvary. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right hand and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. The sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Then he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breast and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. As a Christian, I believe that Jesus was the Son of God who came to the earth for one purpose. He did not come to judge or accuse us. He came to save us, to give us an opportunity to receive forgiveness, asking him to come into our lives. For me, there is great power in the cross. It means so much. Without the cross, we could not have forgiveness of our sins. So let's look at the power of the cross. P, the purpose of the cross. To give forgiveness of our sins. In John chapter 3 verse 16, we read these words spoken by Jesus himself to Nicodemus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son, Jesus, a perfect sinless man, to pay the penalty for our sin by dying on the cross. The offering. 
Throughout the Old Testament, the Bible tells us that people had to bring their best animals to the high priest, who would offer them as a sacrifice to God, asking for forgiveness for the wrong they had done. The shedding of blood would pay the penalty for that wrong. But they would go and do wrong again, and they would feel guilty. And so they would bring another offering sacrifice to God, which would earn them forgiveness again. And then they'd go off and do wrong. And this pattern followed generation after generation. God wanted to give us a way we could seek his forgiveness once and for all. He wanted to give us a once and for all sacrifice. So that he did not, we did not, not have to repeatedly come to God offering sacrifices for forgiveness. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as the perfect offering. Jesus was crucified a horrible, hideous death, suffering ex extreme pain. He bowed his head, saying, it is finished. He paid the penalty deserved by us. He gave his life for you and for me. W. Worthy of our worship. Did you notice in the reading from Luke's Gospel that there were two criminals crucified alongside Jesus? One was hurling insults at him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. The other criminal, however, recognised that Jesus was somebody special. Don't you fear God, he said. We are here because of what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. This criminal worshipped Jesus, saying to him, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it was that simple recognition that Jesus, as the Son of God, was able to forgive sins that earned him forgiveness and a home in heaven. The criminal recognised Jesus was not worthy of death, but of worship. E. Why everybody should know about the cross. So, if Jesus could forgive the criminal on the cross at his point of death, salvation and forgiveness for his criminal acts, he can do that for you. I have heard some people say, I've done too many things wrong, I can't get to heaven. Oh, I'm not worthy of God's love. All these doubts people have when they don't need to. We read in John's Gospel the word whosoever. That simply means everyone. You see, we may wonder what is good about Good Friday when it is a time we remember Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was crucified on the cross. Well, the simple answer is it is the day Jesus gave his life that we might have eternal life through our faith and belief in him. He died to pay the penalty for our sin. You are the whosoever. Everyone can have forgiveness through faith in Jesus, our Saviour. Jesus asked us to remember his death, which is what we do when we have communion. And finally, we read of the reassurance of the cross. We have spoken how some people have doubts as to whether they could ever receive God's forgiveness, whether they could get to heaven. How often have you heard people say, you'll never get to heaven, or I'll never get to heaven? Well, I can give you that reassurance that through faith and trust in Jesus Christ, through accepting him as your saviour, asking him to come into your life, you can have forgiveness of your sins and have that reassurance of an everlasting life with Jesus himself in heaven. We are living at a time when many thousands of lives are being lost because of the coronavirus. Young and old are being taken quite suddenly. Is this a time when we should consider what happens after death? What does your future hold? If you have any concerns about the future, if you would like the reassurance of knowing that Jesus died for you on the cross, 
then maybe now is the time to give that some consideration. Maybe now is the time to ask Jesus to come into your life so that you have that peace and knowledge that you will have an everlasting life in the place that Jesus has gone to prepare for us. As you enjoy your cup of tea or coffee, as you eat into that hot cross bun, remember the cross on the top reminds us of the cross on which God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave his life that you might have forgiveness of your sins. Of course, we know that Jesus rose from the dead and that is for Sunday's message, which we will hear from Bob Telford. And I would point you to our Facebook page or our website to download that talk from Bob on Sunday. Let's just commend our word to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you died on the cross of Calvary and that through faith and trust in you, the perfect sacrifice, the one who came to pay the penalty for our sins, we can know forgiveness of our sin. Lord Jesus, we know that you are the saviour of the world. You died that we might live. We thank you for that this morning. And at this time of the year, when we remember your death on the cross, we also remember the resurrection, because you are a living Lord, a living Saviour, who rose from the dead and has promised to come back to take us to be with you. Lord Jesus, we do pray for the situation regarding the coronavirus. We pray for the NHS workers, the frontline emergency services, those in pharmacies, those in the supermarkets, those doing essential work in care homes and in the community. We pray that you might keep them safe. Father, we thank you for your gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stay safe. Stay at home and protect the NHS and save lives. Thank you for listening. <laughs>